My guest is Wayne Nelson, lead singer, bass player, and band leader for the Little River Band, and just as important, the longest-running member of the group. The band will be performing in the Westgate International Theater at Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino this Saturday, August 5th at 8 p.m. For ticket information, go to westgateresorts.com, and for everything about the Little River Band, go to reallittleriverband.com, and you can follow them on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and SoundCloud. And Wayne, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ira. Good to see you. Same here. How do you explain the close connection between the band and fans? Because your band has a unique relationship. How did that start and how do you continue it? Um, first and foremost, the music. Uh, the the songs, uh, Little River Band songs were never about a haircut or a spandex or a, a trend <laughs> or a political statement there's always been about life situations and you can put happy anniversary on for a three-year-old and they're going to connect to it for its fun but you put it on for a teenager they get it uh you you put on cool change for anybody that's got a boat or a you know loves the mountains or whatever they get it and that's that's that, that's the connection first and foremost there are millions of night owls out there i mean <laughs> Vegas, come. so uh that's first and foremost second is the live show still honors that tradition and, the, and those memories and that connection and the third thing is we don't we never i've never been part of, of a show that was phoned in there are times when people are it's a friday night and they're tired and they're just non-concert if you know what i mean we've had raucous concerts we've had ones where people we, we played a wednesday show last week and there were people yawning in the second song because it was <laughs> it was it was 8 30 they had had a hard week at work it was still bright outside so we but we never let that get in the way of we're delivering these people's memories and taking them back through a scrapbook complete with some new music too that we're very proud of so i think those three things combined is that those people feel that we care about them when they get to a show and we do because we are of the philosophy, if not for them, we're not there. We're we're pumping gas somewhere. So it, it it says it says it at one level that it's common sense, but at the same time, so many bands don't factor that in. You guys always have, and I think the consistency is what really makes it work. You're not half cold, half hot, depending on the year or the decade. It's always been a consistent inner relationship between yeah. you or interaction between you, you the band and the fans. Well, the other thing that we find out too is when we meet and greet and talk and and engage with people we find we hear different stories ranging from breakups to family members passing to joyous occasions together all those things are wound in they mean so much to people and if I, we know bands that and solo artists that stay in their bubble they come off the thing they got the shrouds no one looked mr so-and-so in the eye there's no eye contact you, you know those stories sure I just, I just don't and in the end how, how can you not burn out on your own bubble sooner or later you're just going to go i'm tired of being me or <laughs> <laughs> seven um but when you hear those things and you can relate to them and then you can see them while you're playing the song and their face lights up that is that's what a performer wants along with 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 presenting you know music for the band the performer wants to exchange that energy and it's just the lifeblood for 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 all of us for everybody you mentioned too that people come to you after the show and talk about their memories and you have been with the band so long you have a long-term perspective on not just the band but the fans as well what from your perspective because again i mentioned in the opening that you've been, you've been with them so long that does it differ from the other guys in the band in terms of your appreciation of, of I'll use this terribly used word, the brand of the band? Do you have a more unique perspective of it than the other members? Or they're aware of it, obviously, just because of the reaction of the fans, but you have that longer term view. I, this is a convoluted question, but I think you know where I'm going with this, which is really your perspective. Well, I, I, I do. I get the question. Um, first of all, they're not there are situations where they could just be hired people. We live in Nashville where people are replaceable and you know no one knows who, what band is showing up the next week kind of thing. That's not the case with Little River Band. I, I've never wanted it to be that way. So in ways that I can engage them uh, 
across the board doing interviews or meet and greets or everybody signs things and um it's actually more and more rolling over to the younger members of the band mm -hmm. because sooner or later the day will come when i am too old to walk up the stairs of the bus so the brand doesn't need to stop because one person does this band is a, a legendary example of that what you know the band is the brand is 48 years old and still going strong so yes they get it they their their perspective is we're winning those people to know this version of the band this chapter they're, they're they feel very responsible for it and want to carry it forward in that way there is a whole nother group of people that used to be in the band and there is a very different perspective from them that i lived through and saw and was quite uh, amazed by. Um, they acknowledged that they were there, but we didn't engage with fans almost at all. There were there used to be people along that fence. We might say hello and sign a couple of things, but we didn't engage with people anywhere near the way. Part of it's social media. We can engage more now, but um, that was a very different perspective then. They were. Uh, aloof for separation. Yeah, a little, a little distancing involved in that. Distance, exactly. Perfect yeah. word for it. Um, and and they, they, they kept it that way. Um, and more power to them. I mean, they, those guys laid the foundation of the band and with, with great songs and great music and so on and so forth. But the perspective now is much more an interaction than it, than it used to be. And the band was formed in Melbourne, Australia in 1975, which shows you how long the band's been around. You performed in Night Owls, or you sang in Night Owls, and you were formerly with the Messina band, right? Right. Yep. Uh, joined Jimmy's band in 78, and the only um, touring we did, of it, we, we worked on his first solo album extensively, and we were abandoned to ourselves, so we would rehearse with Jimmy during the day, and we would play our set at night, and that went on for about six, eight months. Got in the studio, did his record, and then we hit the road and the only touring of substance we did was to open for Little River Band for two weeks. They were doing a live record. They wanted the same routine every single day for two weeks to, to get into that flow, which worked perfect for us. And uh, lo and behold, their bass player had quit and they were looking for a bass player and they're always looking for somebody that sang to help keep those vocals fresh and beefed up. Um, and so we got to the end of the two weeks with that and Messina was right on the verge of pulling the plug on everything because the record wasn't that successful. Little River Band made the offer and they said, we'll call you in April when we're going to get ready to go. And I went, yeah, sure you will. Take it. <laughs> Here's my number. And they called. And then rehearsal, tours, recordings. Um, and that's when I found out there was some turmoil within the band regarding interpretation of songs and lifestyles and so on and so forth. Normal band stuff after Sure. Five years of touring and, and, and working together. Um, and it turns out that Night Owls was brought to rehearsal when the lead singer wasn't there in order for somebody else to get their teeth into it first. And then it just evolved to me. We got to uh, the studio and, and George Martin was our producer and said, Wayne's vocals, the one that's going to go on the record. And it was top five within, within two months. So that was the arc of, of you know, basically a hired hand by Jimmy Messina and uh, a top five record, you know, 18 months later, it was pretty crazy. Are you amazed? I'm sure you've gotten this question before, but I have to ask it once in a while. I do. I like to ask a cliche question, but are you amazed at the 40 plus years you've been with the band that it was going to last that long for you? I, 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 can, I can remember clearly, but the drummer from my first band in high school is still a very good friend, very close friend that we travel together he comes to shows he gets his musical fix from coming to vicariously live through and stand on sure. side stage um and we both were amazed that our band stayed together for three years we both were of the opinion that we would be certainly wouldn't be career musicians but that we might not even make it to age 35 that was the <laughs> you know that that <laughs> out of high school you're in college you're like you're 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 crazed and you're you're watching the music business around you and people are dropping like flies well we figured we'd just end up somehow being in that same case so being in the band now for 43 years is 
uh, I'm 73 years old. I, I didn't really expect to get this far. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm late, grateful for every day. I also have a great idea for you. You mentioned earlier about, you know, you'll, you'll reach a point where you can't get up the steps of the bus. You know, buses have lifts. Oh, please don't suggest that to the crew. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking forward to a hammock sometime in the new. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I'll I'll go till my hands give up. I know my throat's gonna go through its thing, you know, and whatever. But um, we got plenty of singers in the band. But if my hands can't do what I want to do, uh, mm -hmm. I love being a bass player. So that that'll be the that'll be the signal that it's time to time to quit. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep being involved with the band. Uh, behind the scenes I tour manage us now so all the logistics getting there getting home bill, pay the bills write the checks you mean in addition to everything that I said in the opening about all the things you do with the band we now have to add tour manager as well yeah tour manager bookkeeper um <laughs> and and basically hazel on the bus I I wash the dishes <laughs> when everybody else goes to bed. Uh, well wait a minute if you're 73 that's the first thing you should give up is doing the dishes well, yeah, you're right, but I can't, I can't convince anybody else to do it. So. <laughs> There's a thing called paper plates, but I guess that's that's wasting. Oh, uh, it is. Uh, I'm also a, a, a hippie at heart, so I'm <laughs> pretty green. You know, before we started, I mentioned you were coming to the Westgate, which used to be the Las Vegas Hilton, and before that, the International. And you were talking about how iconic of a property it is. Uh, for some people that may not know, I, I worked there for five years as a VP of Communications. Uh, in 2004 and 2009. So I'm very familiar with the property. I had a chance to really get the vibe of the place, especially the Elvis years, uh, you know, backstage and meeting some of the guys that used to perform with Elvis. When you come into a property like that, do you get that vibe that it's different from other venues that you've performed in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there, are, there are classic venues like the Ryman in Nashville. Um, uh, shoot, Red Rocks in Denver. Um, some some classic, uh, you know, old wooden wooden structures in, in Europe and and around the country where you know that they're the the, the wood is worn out where some great feet used to stand, um, and yeah. I'll, I, you know there I've seen Olivia, uh, Tony, uh, Barry Manilow. I know El I didn't get to see Elvis, but I saw the movie and it, it was front and center in the in the movie too. But um, yes, everybody gets you breathe that air when you walk into that building and you know you're in a historic place and then and, and you you step your game up in your head to go gotta bring it gotta bring it tonight this is uh this this is a place of legendary uh performances so sure we'll, we'll, you got to give 100 percent, even if that that audience member in the second row is falling asleep you've got to give them five, even if the guy's got his arms folded and he's and he's <laughs> Bro, it has happened, but uh, <laughs> I always like to try and it's not. Always... Way, I just want to say, by the way, that's the person we try the hardest to win over. When he finally wakes up, we're just like, <laughs> dude, we're getting you on your feet and you're going to leave here knowing you had a good time. But, so. <laughs> you're right. And then you meet him afterwards to sign autographs and you'll find out that he really enjoyed the show, but he was just tired. Yeah. Yeah. Just worn out. Yeah. I occasionally like to have a. Uh, the other members of the band mentioned just because it's it's a it's a fair shake. So if you want, you can mention Chris and Bruce and all the people just to give them a shout out if you want. We'll do absolutely keyboards. Um, uh, the second to me, the longest standing in the band over sixteen years. Um, uh, keyboard wrote all of our charts for all of our orchestrations. We've got a live record out called Black Tide, which is with an orchestra. It's all the hits and and new music with the orchestra. Chris did every note that they read and play. A great musician. Um, our drummer's Ryan Ricks was retired for 15 years and, and works as an IT uh, specialist for a healthcare conglomerate in, in the U.S. He'll come to soundcheck with his IT headphone here and his earphone in over here for us to do our sound checks. And he's doing double duty, you know, multitasking back there behind the It's amazing. Up at 6 a.m. every morning on the bus to go to the back lounge and start doing his work. It's great. Not, but not the dishes, though. Not the dishes. Oh. You'll see why. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the uh, next in line is Colin Winery. He's been our, a guitar player in the band now for five years and it's just moved over to be the lead guitar player, if you will. But to replace that fifth person, we, we ran across um, Bruce Wallace, who 
tried, he, he auditioned or was going to audition for the band 16 years ago. And he took a writing job in Nashville instead and started kicking himself for 15 years that he had been <laughs> So when it came full circle back to him, he was like, I'm in, I'm not losing this. I'll see you on the bus. So, exactly. <laughs> but I'm not doing dishes. <laughs> not, no, I don't do dishes. I'm the only dishwasher. <laughs> There's another thing that the band does, a little River band does, which some groups do and some don't, but you, over a long period of time, have supported a lot of causes like Wounded Warriors and Habitat for Humanity, Animal Rescue, Children's Hospitals. When did that start, and how do you work that out and balancing it all in terms of support? I mean, and it's a worthy, they're all worthy causes. Not all bands are able to donate time, money, effort, et cetera, to it, but you guys do. How did, how did that first start, and how do you continue that? Um, I got to go back to, you know, a personal experience. I lost a daughter and left the road to try and start a foundation for, at that point, I had, I had gotten into, um, uh, in San Diego, working with um, uh, social services, and mm -hmm. essentially kids that had been separated from parents because of abuse or or poverty or whatever the reason was it's a tragic thing um and i came out trying to start a foundation to to do something and the offer to come back to the band came at the, just the right time to say we're going to do new music number one which we hadn't been doing so one of the reasons i left and the second thing was it would allow me to keep the foundation running uh, uh from the road and fund it and so on. Subsequent to that, I met my wife who is hugely into dog rescue and was doing her own uh, nonprofit work here in Nashville. And that was our first connection that we both struck it, it off it, it, talking about our individual efforts. Um, and that just rolled over into as soon as we got married and the, the band started to get these Again, with meet and greets, we would be we would be talking to wounded warriors who had come back from Iraq and so on and so forth. And little by little, between dog rescue and wounded warriors, which were two of our mainstays, we started offering to do shows for free and let all the proceeds go to the either local or national charity. Um, we did a Fourth of July once in Pittsburgh, and wounded veterans had walked from New York City to that stadium in Pittsburgh and walked into the stadium while we were playing there. Um, it, it was chilling and honor, uh, you know, an honor and, and, and humbling all wrapped into one. And that's kept going. We're doing, um, we're doing one for the SEAL team people, um, later on in the year in October. Uh, and again, we, it's just a great way to that, let them use the, the brand, draw people to the show, get their memories uh, you know, satisfied and so on and so forth, but yet doing it for a cause and then all the proceeds go to the charity. Um, and that one is a national charity. We're doing one, a local one in Iowa in December, which is uh, basically a food food um, uh, drive, you know, food food gathering drive, gathering funds for that to keep, keep people fed at Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. Uh, the, the need never goes away out there. You know, we can see whatever headlines we want to see and we can look at whatever neon we want to look at, but there's still a lot of people hurting. And, and this is such a great way to honor all the support that we've gotten and, and give back. Um, and people are just anxious and hungry for a way to do it that they trust. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of scammers out there. Right. We just put a bucket. We've got literally a bucket brigade. We call it, we put a silver bucket on the merch table and say, if you've got a dollar, you got 70 cents, five bucks, whatever. And it, it, on that local level, that puts so many meals into a paper bag that people can drive through and get for their kids and, and so on and so forth. You're helping countless people by just putting your chump change into the bucket before you leave, you know, after you've had a great night. It, it, it's just a, a, a simple, clean way to give back. And it also still ties in with your fans, which is nice. So you're, you're, you're helping out other people and you also are engaging the fans and we should point out that if you go to little river band fan club.com you can find out more about the fan club and if you go to obviously the website itself and, and you've got you're all over the place as far as um facebook twitter youtube and soundcloud 
but the real little river band.com say that three times real fast you go to that website you get all the information about the band and well, you're currently working on a couple of things tell us about what you which you got you mentioned the last album that you were doing mention that again and also what you're working on as a band the the last album of original music was called cuts like a diamond came out in um 2013 um since then we've done uh a christmas record uh a uh, we submitted two songs for a Beatles tribute and then we um uh, uh our producer put together the hits revisited which is basically a the the hits honored as much as possible but with new technology mm -hmm. uh, so that it could be digitized or streamed or whatever and had that the, the, the bigger sonic range but the 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 greatest achievement that we're all so proud of is that live record with the orchestra because it took well over a year to do and get the sample, the performances, get the right orchestra playing with us two or three times and then have it all come together. Um, and that one's called Black Tide. On the heels of that, the producer of that record was that guitar player that left and the, 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 the new music bug got into all of us, like all at the same time. So Bruce came into, this, into the band. He's been a longstanding writer. Bruce, Colin, Chris, have taken the production and gone, uh, you know, gone modern conveniences with it. And um, it's just a fantastic collection of brand new songs uh, reflecting where we're all at in life and, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and, you know, we, we know we're not going to chart, but there's a song on there called The First Time, but it's about hearing a song for the first time that was written about you, Miss, Miss Love, uh, you know, love, love connection there. Um, and it's it's just a stone cold hit song that we know will never get put on the radio. <laughs> that's just the nature of the beast. But yeah, it's we, a different world. Yeah, we got plenty of outlets now where we can we can get the song heard, get the music heard, mm -hmm. and there's four or five more to follow it up. It's a real good project. And with the touring schedule and us living, you know, in separate parts of the country, it's been it's taken a long while to pull it together. It's not like we all went into the studio for two weeks and looked each other in the eye every day. It doesn't, right. just doesn't work that way for a touring band. So, um, but we pulled it together and it just sounds amazing. I'm super proud of that. The live one with the, with the orchestra cuts like a diamond. We've, we've created some great new music since, you know, chapter three or four of the band's history. With your upcoming performance here at the Westgate, are you introducing new material as well as the classics? We'll have new material. We'll have material that people haven't heard before um, from Cuts Like a Diamond. The, the the hits will be there for sure. the The new record working title is Window to the World, and it's it's getting those last touches. We actually haven't sat down for a couple of days at rehearsal to start playing those songs that we had written and played on in the studio. Mm -hmm. Pull them together as a band and get them ready for presentation. Um, so that probably won't happen in Vegas. That'll be music that people haven't heard before. And there's going to be a song in the set. I'm not sure. This is an obscure, it was a hit in Australia for the band, but it's called Home on Monday, written about the band. And it is written around, can you guess where I'm calling from? The Las Vegas Hilton. So that's, <laughs> we, there's no better place in the world to play that song than, uh, yeah. than, than Westgate. So Exactly. And August 5th is the date. Uh, for people who may not have caught it oh, when oh, the little oh, river band will be there uh here right. in las vegas you're based i know you mentioned the group is kind of all over the country but you're based in nashville right we're all based in Nashville. i just moved back my wife and i just moved back to nashville which is where she's from um and we met here but um uh we were she's got a asthma issue so we've been chasing good air for about 15 years trying <laughs> to find where it works for her right works out that nowhere works for her. It, uh -huh. no matter where you go your body finds the thing that's going to trigger its mm -hmm. problems even if you, even if you're out to the ocean and you live by the ocean it still will pick she'll still we, have a problem it, san diego didn't work for her when i was living there florida didn't work for her when we lived there uh we were just in scottsdale and even the desert it, it catches up with you right she, look if i'm if i'm going to have to deal with this i might as well go back home and deal with it at home where right. mom is. we came back to nashville and now the only the only member of the band that travels outside of Nashville now is Chris Marion, who just moved to Vegas. 
married, <laughs> he's married to Stephanie Calvert. I don't know if you know that name, but Stephanie no. used to be. Uh, she was the Grace Slick member of uh, Starship uh, for ah, years, okay. and she's branched out on her own. Amazing voice. Chris and Stephanie sometimes perform in Vegas on their own, just as a two-piece, mm -hmm. uh, just to just to play during the week, you know, and, and keep her voice going. But she's now working with uh, the Righteous Brothers. She subbed for the person who was having a baby, and I guess that's going to stick and whatever. But <laughs> big plug for Stephanie Calvert. Stephanie, absolutely. Calvert. If and she may ever, be there. She may be there for 43 years, just like you. Uh, <laughs> <Chris hopes so. laughs> you know, you were talking about moving around, trying to find clean air. I'm not saying you should move to Las Vegas, but you may want to try Las Vegas and see how that works for you. There for three years, seven from 07 to 2010, we were in Summerlin. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah, right away out there by Red Rock uh, sure. National Park, State Park. Yeah, like exactly right. Exactly right. Loved, loved every minute of it. But we bought our house. We thought the that we thought the market had hit its bottom, and then three years later, we found out where the bottom. <laughs> Before I let you go, what's the fondest memory you have of performing with the band over forty three years? Gosh, yeah, I mean, or maybe some... two, maybe there's two or three. I'm sure there's tons, but if you may think of one or two that that well, the, are most meaningful to you, the first <laughs> one has to be um, we had done the obligatory rehearsal and so on and so forth when I went to the band. Um, and the second show we performed was with uh, Bob Marley, Fleetwood Mac, a singer named Nina, and it was at Olympic Stadium in Munich. And it was my 30th birthday, 125,000 people. And it was a cold, ugly, rainy German spring day. <laughs> And we, we walked on stage for our hour slot and the skies parted and the sun came out and people were just partying and having a great time. We got done and Fleetwood Mac was getting ready to go on stage and it just bucketed down again. <laughs> so, you know, somebody's got some connections here. I don't know. <laughs> that, that is a legendary moment. Um, and gosh, there's so many. I, I would... Um, I'd have to say Red Rocks was probably another one of those oh, moments, you know, where where here we are playing at in this glorious natural amphitheater um, sold out. We were working with the Doobie Brothers and it was just one of those nights where you go, OK, this is mom, dad, this is going to work. I'm going <laughs> to I'll be able to feed myself. We're OK. <laughs> well, that's a great way to leave it. My guest has been Wayne Nelson, lead singer, bass player and band leader for the Little River Band and Dishwasher as well. And Dishwasher, yeah. <laughs> the longest running member as well, which is almost as important as Dishwasher. The yeah, anybody that lasts this long, you're going to be washing dishes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, the band's performing. <laughs> the band will be performing in the Westgate International Theater at Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino this Saturday, August 5th at 8 p.m. For ticket information, go to westgateresorts.com. And for everything about the Little River Band, go to Real Little riverband.com and you can follow them on facebook twitter youtube and soundcloud and wayne thanks for being on the show ira it's a pleasure great to talk to you same here see you next time